Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. My name is Ella Slingsby and I'm a professional ballet dancer. So if you don't know, I am moving to America. That still feels weird to say. I got a job offer in America working in a ballet company. Obviously that meant that I needed to get a working visa. I'm gonna take you step by step on what visa I got, how I'm getting it, telling you everything that I have done to receive my working visa. So the visa I'm getting is a non-immigrant work visa and it's a P1 visa. The P1 visa is a non-immigrant visa that allows foreign citizens who are athletes or entertainers to come to the US temporarily to work. The first step in this process is for the petition to be filed over in the US. So this process needs to be started over there for petition-based visas. We were given a list of all of the documents that they would need to be able to start the process. The documents that we needed were the attached form needed to be filled out, the I-129 form, a short bio of where you have studied and danced before coming to the company, three letters of recommendation from your school or company you have worked with beforehand, any copies of any awards or productions that you've been in, if you needed your C TV, the name and city of our embassy. We quickly hopped on to asking people if they could do us a letter of recommendation. I managed to get some really great ones which I was so happy and grateful for. I would say it took us maybe a week and a half to sort all of this out just to make sure that every single step we had done because these things are really important and you just don't want to miss anything out. Once we had sorted out all of those documents we emailed them over to the lady who was filing our petition for us and who was doing all this process for us basically and this lady works for the company. We sent them on the 17th of June so that literally took me only 10 days to do. Let me just mention I was put on a group visa. There are four of us who are on this like group visa together. All of us had to get all of our documents in on time. The lady had to wait for everyone's documents to be in to then continue the process. So once she had received all of the documents, she had to wait for a visa consultation letter from the AGMA. And then once she had received that, she could then send all of our documents away in the mail to the embassy. Everything was mailed over on Thursday, the 14th of July. The tracking said that the day after on the Friday, it had all been received, but this was not like a confirmation to say that the process had started. It had been a few days and we were kind of starting to think like, hey, like this has taken a long time. But on the 27th of July, we received the receipt number. This was like the key to unlock the next door because the next door was to then start the process over here in the UK. That day from receiving the receipt number, we then had 15 days until we would hear whether it had been approved approved or declined. It could go either way because the US only give out a certain amount of like each visa each year so if they've been all given out then it's gonna be a no. We waited 15 days. On the 10th of August the visa got approved over in the US. The petition was approved. Everything was fine. So that was a big step and a big tick in the process because that meant that we could progress further into the process. But that was like the first point of call that you want to get an approval for. So, wow, this is a long process. <laughs> At the beginning, we actually didn't know that we would have to do a whole thing over here. We thought that once it had been approved over there, then that was it. That was not the case <laughs> because obviously we have to receive the visa. So I understand like something needs to happen this side. We were under the impression that we would need an interview. To get to that point, we would need to fill out the DS-160 form. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, which is an online form. And this is a form that everyone 
everyone needs to fill out. Doesn't matter what visa you're on. So me and Dave did this on an evening and it took us probably about three hours. It was a lengthy form. We did it really slow and carefully so we were doing everything right and we checked over it a lot of times. There were a lot of questions, like a lot of questions. <laughs> there were a few things that we needed to get, information bits that we needed to like confirm but it was very self-explanatory and it was easy to do the form. We then had to pay the fee. I think it was 167 pounds. So this is a fee that every single visa type needs to pay. The price does differ depending on what visa you're applying for. Petition-based applicants, HL, O, P, Q and R, they have to pay £167. We got an email with confirmation of filling out the form okay and also of our payment. At this point we were feeling pretty good because, you know, our petition had been approved over in the US, now we'd done this form. In this email of like confirmation, it said on there, you have successfully completed the US visa application registration process. Based on the information you provided, you are not required to attend a consular interview at this time. Due to the high demand, my case has been placed in a virtual waiting queue. When the consular section is ready to review my application, they will send application submission instructions to the email address that I provided. Please be advised that it can take several weeks or months before you receive this email. That is when I started to feel a bit deflated. <laughs> I knew that this process was a lump the process. I was prepared for it to be long. The next morning I got an email with my instructions. So it literally was one day after and I was so happy. This was basically a whole instructions page, like, oh my gosh, a lot of information on what the next stage for me was. This next stage was for me to send all of my required documents to a DX courier. All those documents would then be sent to the embassy. The documents that we needed were my passport, my non-immigrant visa application form DS-160 confirmation page. So we had to print off that. The confirmation and instructions page printed from this website. One five by five centimeter color photo taken within the last six months. Me and Dave had already gone like a month before this because I'd read online a few months back that this is something that we would need. So we were organized with that one. I also needed the receipt number for my approved petition Still at this point, we were waiting for our petition to be approved over in the US. Here were the instructions. It said, gather all the required visa application supporting documents. First time applicants refer to your appointment instructions for a list of required documents, which is the ones I just read out. We had to travel to one of our authorized courier locations. Place your visa applications, documents and the second page of the certificate into a courier envelope. Present the first page of this document along with the envelope to the courier agent. We read through that a good few times just to make sure we fully understood it and all that. On the 10th of August, our visa was approved, which then meant we could send all of these documents now to the courier. We wasn't quite sure whether we could have sent them without it being approved yet, but I think the logic seems like you should wait for it to be approved. The day after we got all of our documents into like these brown envelopes, we got like hardback envelopes. I was actually traveling home that day anyway, so I stopped off in London, which I was going to anyway. I went to the Sal London DX drop-off point. I dropped them off on the 11th of August. It is currently the 19th of August. We've been told it's going to take around 21 days, working days, to get an email to say, hopefully, pick up your documents. <laughs> we have to go and pick up the documents once we get the email from Chancery Lane. There's a few locations, there's literally like three where you can go and pick it up from. That is our designated one. So it's just me waiting. <laughs> I feel like I'm being pretty good. It's hard to be patient when I've been patient for so long, but I know it's gonna be worth it. Each day I'm like getting closer and closer and closer to getting it. If it takes that 21 days, it says, it should, in an ideal world, be ready on the 8th of September. So it's currently the 19th, so that's in one, two, nearly three weeks. 
So if you're interested to see how it all panned out, then keep watching. But for now, I'm gonna go. I'm like, very excited to update you guys soon. Hey, so I'm here to update you. On the 24th of August, we got an email saying our documents are being sent to Chancery Lane where we need to go pick them up. So this was way earlier than expected. I literally just told you a bit before, wasn't it? It was expected like the 8th of September and they sent that on the 24th and it said the shipment process takes an average of one to two business days. On the 26th of August, we got an email saying your passport documents associated with tracking number blah 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 were delivered on the 26th. You can go pick them up. We had tickets booked that day and we went to London on that day to collect it. We got it. We got the visa. We got it within like around three months. My next video is gonna be a vlog of me getting the visa. I show like when I go to send off the documents and then I like update you a little bit throughout and then finally when we go to Chancery Lane and we collect it. So yeah, that's the full process of how I got my visa. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and you'll be seeing me very very soon in the next one bye